Welcome to Round Robin Radio episode 14. I hope you guys have enjoyed the previous shows. If you haven't checked them out yet, you need to check it out. We previously just had Crypsilisk and before that we had Random Fact. So be sure to check out the channel. There's a lot of content, Round Robin recordings and Round Robin Radio. Please hit a like and subscribe. You have no idea how much that helps us just to sort of grow the channel because there's a lot of cool things that we're busy doing, but it is dependent on your support. So we always thank you guys for that. In today's episode, special guest, Mr. Dan Schultz. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, dude, it is so cool to have you. So for the guys who don't know Dan, like go to the Round Robin catalog and just look for all the tracks that have more streams than anybody. I mean, by <laughs> thousands and thousands. That is Dan. <laughs> Um, he's, he started with us with some melodic techno and then since that he went to the more dubby sounds and literally, particularly those remixes which we're going to touch on a bit later. Anyway, we are going to be chatting to Dan. we got a full interview planned. He is going to be playing a set for us which is going to be... Uh, I'm so excited just to hear what he's been doing and the sound that he's going to present because he's also quite a versatile DJ like myself. But we'll get to him shortly. I'm going to play for you guys now. We're going to be looking at some new releases coming on the Round Robin catalog and just playing some of our favorites. And again, some favorite premieres and tracks from fellow labels that we like and support. So if you do have a track that you would like premiered on the show, drop us a mail, guys, roundrobinrecordings at gmail.com. We're always keen to hear demos, or if you want to do a premiere on the show of one of your upcoming releases somewhere else, let us know. But we'll check back with Dan in a few minutes, and it's time to get into the music. Let's do it. So, this episode, I'm kicking off the show with a brand new release on Round Robin Recordings. Um, this is coming now. It is Chris Carter's compilation that he's put together called Six Masterpieces. Um, it's a collection of himself with a whole bunch of artists from all over the world. Um, it's just such an amazing collection of deep house, house music, Afro house, all fused together. It's absolutely amazing. This is the opening track. This is Chris Carter and it's called Real Love. Only on Round Robin Recordings. I am in love again. Show me something real. Show me something real. Like the open arms of a lover expecting you after a hard day, week or month. Giants and cloaked in the 
Taken from the upcoming Bones Mo House Volume 2 album, this is Bones and Edward. It's called Anikarp. Bones, as you guys know, he I mean he's been featured on the show so many times. He's finally sort of 
put himself out there and launched his own imprint. He's got his own label now called Mo House, named after sort of the whole theme that he had with his first album. This is going to be the second version of that, that sort of series of this album, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Again, just collaborations galore. This is so far my favorite. Like I said, Bones and Edward and Igop. Another track from the Chris Carter compilation that's just released on Round Robin Recordings. This is Black Owl, Take My Love. Um, another just, like I said, amazing house music. The soul, the vocals, everything. Go check out this compilation. It is absolutely fire. Going to be out now on Round Robin Recordings.
The track before this that you're listening to, that's Gary Cooper SA, and it's called Cross My Mind. This track that's just coming in now, this is, it's one of my older tracks. It's a collaboration I did with Third Identity, who's Wave Mini, who's also part of the Round Robin team. And the track is called Collateral Symphony. It's out on Proton, Proton Music. And I don't know, just the like these past two weeks, I've rediscovered this track and I've just been itching to play it out again. Thank you. 
Fellow Round Robin Recordings artist, this is Filter ZA, and this is the phase and remix of his track on Deep Wit. It's called Fibonacci. Um, this whole EP is amazing. You guys need to go check it out.
this is taken from the latest round robin recordings is a new only compilation uh this is oizo clutch and it's called shallow clip and for those of you who don't know this is the alias for dun and dun crawl and we're so honored to have had have had one of the first tracks to be released under this alias and it's just been doing so well on this compilation um honestly i don't think it gets enough play it's just such a beautiful track I'm now going to be picking up the pace a bit. I found a couple of really edgy, sort of higher BPM house tracks that I just have to share with you guys. A little bit of acid house, a little bit of real sort of just old school house. It's time to pick it up.
I believe this one is also from Deep Wit Recordings. Um, this is a very cool remix. It's Kulov Gothara. Guys, I hope I didn't butcher that. I hope I got that right name right. And the original is by Alvaro Highlander. And the track is called Antarctica. This entire EP, there's deep tracks and then these sort of high tempo, high energy tracks. It's an amazing EP. Go check it out. The Bug, Steve Bug and Klee Crew Thing. Oof, this track, guys. So I'm not sure how many of you guys managed to catch Steve Bug when he was in South Africa. It was about a year or two ago. Um, it was absolutely, it, it was so crazy. He played this sound for like four hours straight. And then after that still went to all the old school stuff, all of like the way you make me feel and like all those really nostalgic tracks. It was honestly one of the best main room house sets I've heard in such a long time. Shout out to Off Center and Pablo and Guy and the team for making that happen. Yeah. 
So this is my final track before we hand over to Mr. Dan Schultz and speak to him. This is James Dexter, Dexter and Jack Swift and it's called Switch Up.
So I've actually slowed this down quite a bit. This really does remind me of almost like an old school sort of speed garage sound, that inspiration in the bass. And that brings us to the end of the first half of the show. I hope you guys have enjoyed the tracks. Again, go check out the Round Robin catalog, Bport, Spotify, Apple Music. You can catch all the music there. Oh, and obviously on SoundCloud. But now it's time to learn a bit more about Dan Schultz. Welcome again. Welcome again. Oh, thank you. Welcome to my show. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here finally. Episode, what did we say? 23 it is. No, 14. We're, we're going to get to 23 soon. Yes, yes. Keep watching, we'll get to 24. <laughs> but we have been trying to get Jan, Dan for quite a while. Um, like I said, another bucket list artist, just like I've been ticking them off. And I think let's just start things off like where we start everybody off. Tell us a little bit about your journey, just like where you started, how you got into music. I know that you were at m and while I was still lecturing there, like yes, back in the days. Yes. I mean, yeah, just a quick rundown <laughs> on where you started and how you got to here. Well, uh, you know, I'm 29 now but I've actually been doing music for 20 years okay. <laughs> already. So my dad, although he's an engineer, he always had instruments around the house. Uh, he had pianos, guitars, you know, so I would just play around. And um, eventually when I was nine years old, I started to take guitar lessons, got super into metal. And then at some point, I think when I was around maybe 14 years old, I heard The Prodigy and that changed my life. Okay. Because then suddenly now, saw waves, <laughs> Uh, became a part of the equation and uh, it, it was a much richer sound than I could get out, out of any guitar. Mm. So then I jumped straight into electronic music, uh, got myself uh, a guitar pedal that had a, a light copy of Cubase with it. Mm. And I started uh, just recording things there and then eventually moved on to Ableton. And also growing up, did a lot of programming, did a lot of visual basic, did a lot of uh, graphic design. So the programming nature of music uh, I was really a fan of. So, yeah, I think from then on, it was just the journey of improving, 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 and making sure that I get better and better and better at it. And, you know, coming from a more musical background, I think uh, I always loved dub techno, but I could never make it because I would just end up programming so many synths on top of it and it would end up being this melodic kind of dub mixture mm. that um, I, I guess, you know, if you look at Malik and I, we, we sort of do a similar thing um, where we're, we're, we're creating dubs, but with melodies on top. I think you touched on a good point there. So a lot of guys don't know this, but Dan, I mean, he, he teaches and lectures music, but I mean like drums and guitars and like no, piano. And piano and production. Piano and those sort of things. And so I think you've got a big advantage there. Cause like for, for example, I know me and a lot of the guys that we interview, 
they're also sort of down with the programming of music. But you can see that there's a struggle that comes through sometimes when they, there's a lack of the, the intricate musical knowledge. And I do think that that is one of the reasons why you are so good at your, I mean, not so much the sound design, but the, the complexities in the simplicity of the melodies that you write. And a lot of those top line synths and the things that are found, like if I think of like a place like here, just those little hooks that you've put in or, you know, even the more melodic techno stuff that you did with your first, was it Fission? Uh, your uh, first Fission, release. Yeah. Fission, yeah, the first, the first release with us. Like the complexity in the melodies, you can see that it's not just the electronic side, but you've got that full background behind you, sort of backing you. Yeah, so, so like while, while I'm trying to make uh, dub techno music, uh, deep techno music in, uh, as a whole, I can still play the Moonlight Sonata on piano. <laughs> <laughs> or bang out some metal on the guitar. Exactly. <laughs> so he, he gives me metal playlists for when I'm going to gym and I need a little bit of hardcore psych up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so, so that's how you sort of got to where you are now. Um, I think let's get to the more technical questions. It's something that I always ask the guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you make your music, what your setup is. I know you've recently upgraded, which is very cool. Some of your gear and just like, yeah, uh, what are you using, software using, just yeah, your technical rundown? Well, like I said, I'm now uh, Ableton diehard, Ableton guy. Uh, I'm qualified in Pro Tools, but um, I don't think it uh, meets the needs of an uh, electronic producer uh, as quickly mm. as, um, you know, recordists and, 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 and all that. Um, I do everything within Ableton and um, setup wise, you know, I've got your standard KRKs, you know, the yellow mm -hmm. cones, everybody loves the yellow cones, so mm -hmm. the KRKs with a little Rubik's Cube on top, of course, just to add a little, a little pizzazz. And um, recently upgraded to the Mac M2, so now I can finally make music without having to wait 45 minutes for to render a anything to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I know the feeling. Um, I've also been loving no. my. Emo. Oh, I got the M1, but yeah, it's um, it's it's a it's a big jump when you when you start working on it. And then uh, and sound design wise, I uh, if you even look at my my Instagram bio, it just says source with filters mm. because that is exactly what what I do is. Um, I've never, I've never been much of a preset guy. I've, 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 I take a saw wave and I filter it, and uh, then most of my work is done outside of the synth itself. You know, because once I've, once I've got um, the, the, the base saw wave, I use Massive uh, primarily um, because of the macro controls that you can do on Massive. It's really amazing stuff that you can do with that. But everything is done mostly outside of the synth itself. And um, yeah, it's amazing what you can do with just a saw wave. I mean, if you filter a saw wave enough, it becomes a sine wave. Then You've told me this before, like you always start, it's always a blank saw wave and then you start building from there. Yeah, always, always a blank saw wave. Cause I mean, if, if you use just a blank saw wave and you filter it, then you've got your sub bass. And if you use uh, a saw wave and another saw wave and you detune them, then you've got a nice side tech lead right there, mm. you know? Okay, cool. So. Let's chat a bit then about what you've been doing at the moment, your current releases that are coming out. You can tell us a bit about your label. Let's sort of get back to, to the now of things. All right, so currently, uh, so I launched my label, uh, Shu, which is just the first half of my surname. Mm -hmm. The name actually came from people spelling my name wrong on posters <laughs> too often. So I thought maybe I should just put S-C-H on a, on a T-shirt every time I DJ and maybe people will get it right. I'll so remember that. So I created a label called SHU, S-C-H-U. Um, I actually haven't decided if it's S-C-H-U or SHU. It, mm. it could be what, which, which everyone you like. And uh, to my surprise, people still spell my name wrong <laughs> <laughs> on posters. But uh, we, did, uh, uh, we did really well last year. Uh, we had eight artists, 11 releases and um, yeah, so that went really well. And I've now just launched very uh, pretentiously the other half of my surname, Ults, yeah. <laughs> or ULTZ if you'd like. Yeah. Because um, while I do love my dubs and my deep tech uh, stuff, I realized that that is a genre that is slowly fading out. You know, the, the, the golden era of, 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 say, upstairs truth music for those who get it. Um, is sort of fading out, and people are 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 are, are more more getting into techno. 
people. I think, are I think the tech is yeah. going more mainstream, but you still do you still get the the diehards, the guys that really love and appreciate the dubs. But I, I hear yeah. what you're saying. So it's nice to have those two imprints, so that you can now you know release both styles, mate. Have the freedom to both do both as you feel inspired. Yeah. So now I've I've, I've decided to start the Ults or ULTZ, and instead of starting with releases, I just started to, decided to start doing a podcast. So every Sunday, um, because we know everyone loves techno on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So every Sunday, uh, I put out one mix from a local artist. Uh, first one was me, second one was Kieran and uh, Third one is a secret that is coming out. I think it will probably be out by the time this show goes live. So make sure you guys go check out that podcast. Yeah. And then I think, what are your just give us a bit of rundown on the releases that you have coming this year tell us what you're planning well okay so i just released on shibalo records in mozambique on the border uh there's an excellent uh, song called uh, autumn i think it's one of my best uh sort of more melodic uh, deep songs um maybe you'll hear it now maybe you won't we'll see <laughs> um and then i have got an evan cotton remix coming out on a label that uh, I'm not sure if we're, if, if if it's uh, in my in, if I'm privileged to say such <laughs> things yet. I don't know. Well, from our side, records obviously it depends on your release dates and all that. But yeah, yeah. Um, we'll give you guys a hint. Uh, I've released Techno on there. I suppose you can gather from where the other artist is. But yeah, and I'm um, like uh, I'm very excited for that release. <laughs> I think it's going to be cool because it ties in with the local festival scene, which is always you know nice when you. Yeah, so get the tight in. So okay, yeah, exactly. cool. Yeah, and then of course I've, I I do have um, a, a several techno tracks lined up that I want to release just as soon as I can get them mastered by yours truly. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's also worth mentioning we do have we are busy. We got a Black Robin, which is this Round Robin Recordings techno imprint. Black Robin release, um, you know, sort of pending with Mr. Dan Shorts. And then also Round Robin release coming later, yeah. later this year, which I'm super, I've never ever said no to a Dan Schultz for some Round Robin. Like I said, look for the ones <laughs> with the highest, the, all, the, all the highest streams and you'll find the name. Yeah, no, I see every now and then I get knocked off of the top and then uh, I have to make a plan and get back on top. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, if you go to Beeport, for example, you're still there. And I mean, those tracks have been there forever. I mean, those are some of the, yeah. the older tracks and they're still on the top 10 on, on the label. Like, yeah. it's just... And it's also the most, uh, definitely from my side, it's the most played tracks. Mm. Um, and I, I also find uh, it's it's a, a lot of the remixes become more successful because I find that it's, uh, I've explained this to a few people, that it's more convergent thinking than divergent thinking. Mm. You know, so, so you have this idea and now you just have to build on this um, idea. And I find that a lot quicker. So, so those remixes, I actually bang them out in a day or two because mm. I can just work on what's, given to me instead of you know a blank canvas where um now after okay kick drum now yeah. what <laughs> yeah no, I, I feel it there like how often when i do remixes i've also i've got a track that i've been working on and i've got the foundation but i'm like not really able to finish it yet and then the the remix gives you the inspiration to add the parts and just get it done yeah and then sort of blend those two sounds really successfully yeah but um i I am really, really keen to hear what you present. I think, um, like I said, for you guys who have, might not have been there or have missed it, if you go to the Round Robin Recordings page, there's actually a back-to-back -back set that Dan and I played upstairs at Truth. Yes. Um, and so, I mean, I've heard that son of his. I've heard all of the other tracks we've played from him, all the other releases. Uh, I have no idea what he's going to be playing for us now. So, I'm keen to hear it. Let's get going. Let's Thank do you this. so much. And we're handing over to Mr. Dan Schultz. Excellent. Thank you.
that we should presume uh, uh, to more than a shadow of, of uh, a shadow of the truth. Well, then, uh, finally, or I don't know, finally, but completing my laundry list here, um, linguistic truth, or the truth of language and the illusion that language we because uh, someone quite intelligent said uh, language was invented so that people could lie. In other words, it, it gives you that fudge factor of obfuscation where someone says, you know, why did you do that? Well, the best approach is I didn't do that. You, know, you, you thought I did that. What you thought you saw, you didn't see. In other words, uh, I suppose the, uh, that uh, lawyers are probably the people who have done the finest work with language. Uh, and, and behind them, politicians. And the true potential for language to elevate and to unite the community was early on betrayed into the production of, um, of illusion, illusory and ideological goods which could then be marketed among the people and uh, to spread confusion.
And that is Dan Schultz. Thank you. That Thank was you very much. I had a lot of fun doing that. Deep, dark, dubby, just like the thunderstorm brewing outside. Yeah, that's the way I like to do it. I like to start a little bit deep and then move slowly into heavy stuff. <laughs> and then this amazing track just to close things off. Thank you so much, everybody. Dan Schultz. Go check out his labels. Go check out his releases on Round Robin Recordings. Just go find all this stuff. Every, every piece is gold and multiple genres multiple styles it's all beautiful so thank you so much again for being here thank you and thank you for always being the best mastering engineer around brickwall limited brickwall limited shameless punt <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to be back again very soon with another episode of round robin radio with another special guest as always again guys if you've made it to the end of the show please hit a like subscribe to the channel and go check out all the previous content and share it with your fellow electronic music loving friends but otherwise we will catch you guys next time thank you so much for being here and cheers guys awesome thank you stefan for having me